Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do is pop along to winamp.com. And when you get to Winamp, um, right on the main page there, you'll see a download button, free download. You want to click that. Now you get three options here, basically. You get a bundled version, uh, you get a pro version, and you also get a basic version. We're going to go for the free version, the basic version. Download that. Um, save file. And I'm downloading this to my desktop. And you can open that one right up. Uh, it's an executable, so it'll ask you to run that. And of course, as always, you get these terms and conditions. Make sure you read these before you install the software. Naturally, I'm going to agree today. Now here, um, like all software, you'll get a custom, full, standard, uh, various options that you can install this Winamp by. Now, I always go for custom um, um, just because some, you know, sometimes some of these, these software can be quite fat with stuff you don't need. Now, with in terms of associations here on the next page, I don't really want to associate any of this stuff because I'm quite happy with my configuration. So I'm going to uncheck these boxes. I certainly don't want a system tray, and I don't want to associate any audio files or video files with Winamp. I just want it purely for streaming. I'm quite happy with my other players. Just have it in the Start menu. Um, it's going to ask you for a destination folder. Uh, the standard one on the C drive is fine for me today. Shared settings for all users, depending on logins, of course. Um, the always on, just check your connection here. Mine, I've got an always on connection here, so I'll go for that. And the rest of this stuff I'll leave. Um, select which skin you like. I'm going to go for the standard, uh, well, the modern skin, actually. There we go, that's installed. Very good. Now all this stuff about registering and user information, I'm going to do that later. And I don't want, there's a little box here which allows, which gives you permission to send statistics to Winamp. I don't actually want to do that on uh, today. So I'm going to do uncheck that and then click that later box. Next thing you want to go along to shoutcast.com to get the plugin. This is a very easy plugin to use. Go to the main page of Shoutcast and then go to the downloads section once you're on the Shoutcast main page is a link at the top click on that now you'll get three options here one of them is to be a listener a DJ or to be a server well today we need to be a DJ so we're going to get the plugin for that scroll down and there's some links here for all the downloads on there and we're looking for the plugin the shoutcast plugin for Windows there we go for Winamp shoutcast DSP Digital Signal Processing Plugin for Winamp 5. Click here. It's going to ask you whether you want to save the file. So we'll save that file to our machine. Very quick download this one. There we go. And I'll just open that immediately now. And run that executable file. Terms and conditions again. That's what you're installing, the plugin. There we go. And again, that's going to put it in the same folder as where your Winamp was installed. Now, I'm not going to read the view, re, uh, view the README file. Now, when you go to Winamp, you want to go along to the options um, now uh, to configure this plugin. So we go to options, and that will call, bring up a menu, and then go to preferences, last on the list. And it calls up this other dialog box here. Um, and you scroll down, and on the left-hand side, you'll see underneath plugins is the DSP stroke effect link. Click that, and you can see that your Shoutcast Source DSP plugin will be there. So if you click that, it will bring up this box, which gives you um, all of the options. It gives you four tabs, which allows you to configure the DSP plugin. Um, so if you look at the Output tab first, it'll be there's be a box there where you can input the IP address of the streaming server that you want to stream up to. If you're in Second Life and you've hired or rented a server, you will get that information. You'll get the IP address, the port address, and the password, which you enter here. This is where you're streaming from your computer to. You're streaming up to that server. 
You can check the automatic reconnection if connection fails. The encoder, now typically this will probably be MP3 encoder if you're in Second Life. And then you can select the um, encoder settings. I usually go for 96 kilobits per second at 44.1k. There's the input level, as you can see, because um, I've got something going into my Winamp. Now, if you look on the input on Winamp, you can see you can have a line input or a microphone input. And there you can go. There's the sound card uh, input device. Now, typically, if you put it onto Winamp setting, that will just play whatever Winamp's playing. So that allows you to be a DJ, essentially, you know, play files straight from Winamp, play your MP3s right, MP3s right through Winamp. If you put it to the sound card input, of course, that's probably where you're going to have it if you're a live musician, because that's going to be recording your microphone that's going into, um, into Winamp. And there we are. We can see that the, the feed is being streamed. The output's been sent, it's connected. That's when you know that you're connected up to your server, when you see those numbers flying past at a rate of knots. Now, if we go to Second Life, what you'll find in Second Life is that uh, you need to go to LAN parcels. Now, depending on whether you're playing on your own LAN or, or another venue, um, it depends whether you need to do this, but if you go to the About Land box within uh, Second Life, if it's your land, you go to the Media tab, and there's a, um, a media URL that you can put in there, and that's where you put the streaming server that you're streaming to, because essentially what this does now is allows multiple people to connect up to that, and the server does all of the streaming, all of the bandwidth. There we go, put it into there, Media URL. And then, of course, that then controls... Uh, then you've got a volume for each LAN parcel down in the right-hand corner of your screen, um, which has got a slider for volume. This is, of course, if you've got audio um, or music settings checked in preferences. And that's about it. Of course, you probably won't have to do the Second Life bit if you're playing at a music venue. That music venue owner will probably just give you the IP address and the port address, the port number, and the password, as I showed you previously in the DSP uh, plugin settings, and that's where you would put them. And that's about it. As simple as that. Happy streaming, and very best wishes for your live gigs in Second Life.